Hello my YouTube world, this is Johnny Mo coming to you after an exhausting couple days, you know, since Friday. It's just been like a mad rush. I mean, for those of you that live in four season areas, when you've got spring, summer, fall, winter, I mean, when you got all four of those things and, and the elements that those provide, you know what it's like. You know what I'm about to talk about. You know the feeling of it. And so Friday, it is 70 degrees. And let me just set the stage. It's 70 degrees on Friday. And the leaves just aren't coming down. I mean, we've got leaves that are just staying up there. Now, now this time last year, I was completely done. By this On this day, on Tuesday of last year, I was done putting everything away. Everything was getting the snow work up, the plows, the everything was done. And we're just getting ready for Thanksgiving. Don't have to worry about the business anymore. But I have 25 properties that still have leaves on them. So we're just waiting for them to come down. And you're waiting and waiting. And, and, and it's 70 degrees on Friday. You're getting as many cleaned up as you possibly can because you now realize snow is on the way. Snow was in the forecast for Sunday. Uh, we had a weather advisory, three to five inches coming off the lakes. Um, and since the lakes are, this is prime time too, because when the winds come off the lakes, you got a warmer lake with cold air over top, you just get dumped on. And fortunately, we didn't get that much. I'd say we got about three inches. And most of that was sticking on the pavement was kind of ice. So we didn't get that much, but it did cause us to have to put the trailer away, get the truck transferred, transformed over to the snow stuff. And so Saturday morning to Saturday afternoon was just a huge rush. Get all the all the trailer put away, get everything put away, or at least out of the way, so that you could transfer over to the snow and make sure you still had enough salt supply left over from last year. And then you're up all night looking at the weather reports, like how much are we going to get? Because you know, anymore, if there's a tropical storm or there's anything, they report on it so much, they build it up, and then when it doesn't happen. It's kind of like, you know, it makes you stressed out. Have You have anxiety over it everywhere you go. Did you hear we're getting three to five? Did you hear we're getting, I heard we might get seven inches. Of, I mean, it's so blown up. And then we ended up, I think on the grass, I'd say we got about two inches. And then we got some ice. A lot of accidents, a lot of polyps. I mean, as soon as the, on Saturday morning, it was 50 degrees. So I hurry up, took the sides off the truck, put the, put the plow on, put the solder on. The plow wasn't working properly. It is amazing to me. And I, I, I've said this for years on YouTube or even in business. It's amazing to me that you can put your stuff away. It works perfect. But when you get it back up, something's wrong. I remember last year, this year when, we, when I pulled everything out, my mower, when I put it away, was running fine. I pulled it out. It's running for five minutes. It's got a hydraulic leak. I'm like, how does this stuff happen? And... But the plow would not turn. It would turn left, but it wouldn't turn right. So I either had a stuck stuck valve or it was linked up. It was locked up somewhere. So I had to lube everything up. Finally, I was able to get a hold of a curb and just push it back the other way. And, you know, uh, the it opened up for me and it started working. So I got to get that in, make sure everything's right on that end. I made it through the weekend. Uh, we got some more snow for Monday. And now we're just kind of sitting here waiting for all of this to melt so that we can get back and try to get the rest of the leaves cleaned up. But what a mess. What a mess. It's just a mess when you run seasons, run parallel or overlap each other. Because winter will overlap fall like this. And it's just like, oh, it's just a mad rush. But, you know, we made it through it. And, and understanding that even though you have anxiety, you can't sleep because it's snowing. I... I I struggle to sleep well when I know there's snow falling. Like, I'll check my alarm like six times. Like, did I set this alarm? Did I set this alarm? Did I get this right? Did I get... And I'm sure some of you guys are in snow room. You know exactly what I'm talking about because you miss an alarm. You know, I set... I, I stack the alarms. Like, I'll stack the one 3 o'clock, 3.30, just in case that I missed it 3 o'clock. At least that 3.30 is going off because... And, and my wife thinks I'm crazy about it, but... It's just you want to get out there. You want to get it cleaned. You want it. You want it to be safe. And and for those of you who know are in, in snow removal who've ever gotten the letter from the lawyer, you know why. You know I me. Mean? I've gotten two letters in my lifetime from lawyers about slip and falls. 
And the first one is the most devastating. The, the, the first one's like, what? Oh my, someone fell on my prop. They're suing me. Oh my. And then once you go through it a couple of times, you kind of realize, okay, it's not as bad as um, when you first get it. You're like, you're going to lose everything. But that's why you have insurance. And that's why insurance have lawyers. That's why you have lawyers. And I, and I hear a lot of talk about this. I hear a lot of talk about why well, I have hold harmless clause in my contract. Those mean absolutely nothing. That That is nothing to a lawyer. A lawyer looks at that. You, here's the contract that the, the company signed. Yeah, here you go. You have to understand that you are liable no matter what. So they signed a hold harmless clause, which means nothing. It just ties it up. You think that it means it doesn't. Because if you are physically liable, let's say... Here's a good example. Like we have what's called freeze thaw going on right now. And you have gutters that are filled up maybe with leaves that didn't get cleaned out. So what's happening is it's getting backed up and then you have you have uh, melting snow during the day and it runs across the side. Well, at night it freezes. And let's say that you did not bring that to the attention of the business and you didn't do that and no one knows someone comes and goes down whose fault is that that is a hazard on the property so if you were going to hold harmless let's say you were trying to do you would have to individually state hold harmless for every single little detail let's say that let's say that the opening time is eight o'clock and you got there at five to eight and the melting the melting application you put down did not work in time someone falls you're liable you are liable because you are negligent in the time frame. And it would only take one expert on the stand to get you out of the hold harmless cause. I, the only reason why I say this is because I want you to understand just because you have a hold, hold harmless cause clause in your contract, that does not mean that you will not be sued, That like you're free from it. It's just not true. It's so easily, it's easily, easily just... I gave it to one of our top lawyers in our town, and I said, "Is this contract good?" He just threw it. He looked at. He just threw it aside because I, I would I would abuse that contract. Contract means nothing to me. You know, it does not exempt you from not doing a proper job. And then that's when they're going to interview and they're going to ask you and they're like, "What is the proper time? What's going on?" You know, all of the questions are going to ask. You're not going to be exempt. And I see a lot of this on YouTube. I see a lot of this on the forums, plow site, lawn site. Well, I got I got all harmless and you can't touch me. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. You're not. Trust me. You know, even as something as little as missing the fact that the gutters are clogged. And what, what I like to do is I like to go out, inspect the property, and talk to the, the person in charge of the management or you know who the management in charge of the grounds or you may maybe the person in charge of the property or so, like a manager in the site or whoever it may be you want to get in touch with that person and with regards to hey look we have an issue here you have a leaking gutter this is do you want me to salt this now they say you know what don't worry about it we'll take care of it okay now you break down your contract and you have something stated in there and it says specifically do not want salt for leaking gutters initialed by the manager that's where the clause now comes in effect hey listen i addressed this situation they did not want me to salt it or let's say that you have uh uh let's say i'll give you a good example okay let's say that you have a four you got a block of sidewalks around well the back side may be like an alley side it's not traveled a lot and a lot of times what they'll do is that since it's not traveled a lot, they'll say, you know what, don't worry about that back. Can you knock some money off? Okay, yes. But we have to have that in writing. Okay? So in your contract, you write it up and say, hey, I want this in writing. That states they do not want that back part done. Initialized by someone of authority. It can't be just a basic person, a teller or anything like that. You need... Or, or like you can't, if it's a grocery store, you can't go right into the, hey, can you just initial this real quick? No, you have to have a manager, someone who's in authority, and you have to explain it to them, you know, what's going on. And those are some basic contract things. I think that you should have a contract. I think you should walk the property. 
I think that you should address all damage done by snow plows. I think that has to be in the contract. You're not liable for curbs. You're not liable. I mean, they're covered up. There's nothing that you can physically do. Things happen. So you want a contract that is all encompassing of that. But don't think just because you have one paragraph in there that says rehold harmless of all damage, property, slip and fall, all, that's not going to cover you. You have to be diligent. And that's why, you know, sometimes you, you're you up late at night thinking, okay, i got to get the storm. i got to make sure the storm is covered. And But that's enough about snow plowing. I'm just in the snow plowing mood. In fact, I'm on my way out to get some salt now. I just wanted to drop a video because I've been so busy and have not had time to keep uh, my viewers here uh, up to date what's going on. I I really do hope that you've had a great year. We started this journey in April. I remember doing a video back in April about April 1st. is It's kickoff time. I pray and I hope that you've listened to some of the advice of me and some of the other channels. And, and you are sitting in this part of the winter. And... You were saying, I listened to what Johnny said, and guess what? I've got my money for this winter. I hope that you listened, that you looked at the dates that I, I said to get your money by winter. As I said before, I always look at this at the lawn care business as a game of football. I believe it's four quarters. April and May is the first. June, July is the second. August, September is the third. Um... October, November is the 4th. Now, if you do snow work, I consider this overtime. I consider this overtime money. I do not rely on snow. Even though snow is the most uh, profitable of all of it, I really believe that you cannot rely. Last year is a great example. We didn't have anything in December. We had nothing in March and very little in January. We had a big February. And I'm telling you, don't rely on us. Get your money. You know, this year we went through a drought. Not a great year for a lot of companies. Not a, an awesome year for me, but it was a good year. So, in that third quarter, by Labor Day, by Labor Day, on that on Labor Day, you should have your winter fund in set all the way to the next June, all the way till next June. Now, this is more geared towards the four season people. Some of the Midwest, most of the Midwest, the Northeast, down South, you still can make some money, but still use this, still use it, you know, because I, I, I've seen some videos and I, I guess you can go out once a month maybe and still, so you got a little bit of income coming in, not a lot, but still use that, that September, that Labor Day, that's the deadline to get that winter fun. So you can just chill out through the winter. You know, you can go and do what you need to do. Figure out all your bills. So let's talk about, for a minute here, what happens to the people that didn't make it? Well, you're looking for a job right now. You're looking for a job right now. You're going out there and trying to find a way to make it through the winter. I'm not telling you to give up on your, your dreams of owning your own lawn and landscape business, but we do need to address the reasons why you did not make it. Maybe some of you just started out. That's common. But maybe some of you in your sixth, seventh year and you're still not making it. There's a problem either with you've got too many bills, and, or you got you know you're not you're terrible with your money. You're partying. You're doing whatever that may encounter. We have to address that those two areas. You've got to begin with the end in mind. When April 1st comes and you're cutting grass, you need to be thinking about December, January, February, March, April, May. You have to be thinking of those months. That's when you think about it. It's too late to think about it in August. Like, oh, I don't have anything saved. Then you're just rushing around like a squirrel trying to get a whole bunch of nuts. The problem is there's not a lot of nuts. There's not a lot of time to get what you need made to make it through. Hey, guys, just wanted to drop a little updates tell you what's been going on we got a little bit of snow waiting for the snow to melt so i can get back out there i got 25 cleanups left hopefully those trees will finally let loose but they're still up there it's funny everything's white and you still see yellow trees weird weird year but it's par for the course we had a huge drought now we have snow early that's all right maybe the hunters will get their deers they, i know they love it so have a good one this is johnny mo hope you got out of this got a lot out of this video